The out of body experience. Is it astral or is it etheric? There's a lot of debate out there, but I'm going to tell you what the difference is and how you can work with each plane. <music> A true out-of-body experience is an etheric projection. Astral is internal. Etheric is your energy body. I had an etheric projection, an out-of-body experience, after practicing tons and tons of rituals over a period of time and performing certain types of magic. I was going to sleep one night and I was laying on my side and all of a sudden I noticed that I was laying on my back, very straight. And that wasn't like me at all. I don't lay on my back in bed. And I know that I had just laid down on my side. And when I realized that I was out of body and above my physical body, I snapped back down into my physical body and it felt, it, it felt like a, a really wild movement. And it also, the main thing was that I heard a snap. It was like a, a, a whip sound, like a snapping. And as I went back into my body, that is an etheric out of body experience. Astral is internal. Astral is what we do in path working exercises or remote viewing. The astral plane or astral dimension, you could call it, it's just different frequencies, is really the mental plane. It's the plane of imagination, of uh, vision, and of dream work. Okay, so when you're dreaming, you are working with astral. It's very internal, it's very mental. Astral travel is a skill that you can be trained to work with. Um, those that do remote viewing do astral travel. Astral travel will enhance your ability to manifest things because we're working with the astral realm, the mental realm, and it will also help to develop your psychic abilities. We all have all of the psychic abilities, just at different levels. Just like some people are really good at math, some people are really good at science, some people are really good at language. Um, same thing with psychic senses. You have all of the senses, it's just how much you can develop each one is dependent on you and your natural abilities and um, how much you work at it, discipline. So now the astral is the mental realm, right? It's, it's the area of daydreams and dreams and imagination, whereas the etheric is actually energy. The etheric realm is right above the physical, okay? Um, this is right above the physical. It's very tied into your physical dimension, your physical plane. So this is your energy body. This is your aura. Uh, this is the uh, meridians, the chakras of the, the body, right? So these are the energies. And so if you have like phantom limb, because you, had a, you lost a limb or something, um, you might still experience that it's there because the energy is still there. That is the etheric level. So the etheric is the subtle energy behind a thing. It's like the matrix, the energy matrix behind a physical thing. Whereas the astral, this is an area where it's almost like the internet in a way. It's a mental realm where people can actually connect. You can, you can do things to connect with other people in the astral. Okay, and the astral is where we connect with spirit. Have you ever dreamed of someone that passed away and they came and they gave you a message or a spirit guide did, right? That's the astral mental realm. So your psychic abilities are actually on the astral level, <laughs> right? Um, a lot of people don't realize that. They are on the astral level. So you are getting astral information and then you are interpreting that astral information with your senses. That is astral when you are doing psychic work. If you want to develop your astral experiences, your astral travel, your astral and psychic abilities, a good thing to do is dream work. And dream work is where you start programming your, your mind and connecting your unconscious with your conscious minds uh, so that the astral comes forward more, right? So this is why I always tell uh, my students, make sure you're doing dream journaling. And when you do this, this will actually enhance your astral uh, plane and uh, your connection to it and it will enhance your psychic abilities. So what you do is you just simply journal every night you keep that dream journal by your bed and you don't want to put your feet on the floor before you start writing. Just whenever you wake up, I don't care if it's three o'clock in the morning, seven o'clock in the morning, whenever you wake up, you, you journal. And this will help to bring that astral dimension more into your life and develop your psychic abilities. So with scrying exercises, 
um, this is where you bring the astral more into your physical world. This is where you develop more of a connection as well. Scrying is where you look into like a black mirror or you can look into like a bowl of water and you dim the lights and you just look into it and you meditate and you allow the astral to start giving you visions, right? This was the typical crystal ball <laughs> situation where you look into a crystal ball. If you have a real crystal ball, those are very, very expensive. You can use a crystal ball. It's where you're looking into something reflective and you meditate and you allow visions to start interplaying as you look into it. You can also do this by closing your eyes and meditating. This will enhance your, your astral abilities. Um, it will really help you to um, become more psychic um, because you're working with your astral level of experience. Um, so a, another thing you can do is you can... You could uh, use cannabis, like psychedelic drugs, uh, mushrooms, cannabis, things like that. You can use those uh, to enhance the experience. Just make sure that's something that is okay with your body. Um, some people's frequencies are very, very high level. And so this will actually, if they do psychedelics, it will bring them down and they'll become anxious or paranoid. Um, but if you are somebody that can use those kind of substances and it just brings you up, um, to where you're having more visions and you're just having a good experience, then you could use those every once in a while to enhance the experience. But you don't have to. The more meditation that you do, the more dream work you do, the more of these exercises that I'm, I'm always teaching, um, these will help you to create that astral connection without any psychedelics. You don't need them. But when you use psychedelics, it just kind of triggers more like DMT release and things that happen through meditation. Another one, we were actually talking about this in the school last month, uh, whorehound tea. Whorehound tea um, can actually um, increase, it's a, it's a witch's tea, it can increase some of those um, astral experiences and to help increase your frequency so that you experience, it's a little bit psychedelic. Um, I remember when I first tried whorehound tea, I was doing it uh, because it helps your, when you're sick. But when I did it, all of a sudden I could I was in like a little bit of an astral level and I was like doing all this artwork and everything and it was like really good and I was like, where did this come from? <laughs> and so whorehound tea is another one you can use. To develop a more of like a, a connection to your etheric body, uh, you can do energy magic rituals like LBRP, Middle Pillar, BRH, which is Banishing Ritual, the Hexagram, the Rosy Cross Ritual, um, lesser invoking ritual, the pentagram, supreme invoking ritual, the pentagram, right? You can do all of those energy magic rituals to create um, a stronger etheric body and you, you expand and all of a sudden like you're, you're higher frequency and you can feel things and stuff. You can also practice things like pranic healing, Reiki, which is energy work. Um, Qigong is one of the most wonderful ways to enhance your etheric body and strengthen that energy body and etheric body. Okay, um, anything where you're using your body will get you more in touch with your etheric, but especially energy magic rituals and Qigong. Those are, those are some of the best for etheric um, enhancement. Now I do want to warn you <laughs> not to try to work with the astral without first performing protective energy magic rituals and mental you know, balancing rituals, which are primarily, I mean, you could just say the LBRP in middle pillar, especially LBRP, lesser banishing ritual, the pentagram um, is, it's so essential in, in my perception and in, in other people I've heard talk about this and authors I've read, the LBRP is so essential, especially the Kabbalistic cross, you know, it just kind of helps you to put you into a nice balanced especially elementally, your four energy bodies, um, the mental, the emotional, the etheric, et cetera, the astral. Um, it helps you to balance those and ground you. And it helps you to work with the astral. So um, when we do path working exercises, for instance, which is astral work, um, one of the things that I teach is that you need to know the um, God names like Adonai Ha'aretz, um, you know, these different God names will help you to know if something is, is like a lower astral coming in. Um, and when these lower astrals come in, they can't really hurt you, but they can mess with you a little bit or give you the wrong information. Um, when you chant those God names, when you get good at like LBRP in the astral, like doing it astrally and stuff, 
that is when you can just draw a, a banishing pentagram or you can vibrate a god name and it will help to dissolve that astral if it's not at your level if it's not something that's a part of you a part of your higher self a part of your angels um it will help to dissolve that whatever it is and that's like a that's just a basic practice we do um in high magic work when we're doing astral work so if you want to know more about your own psychic abilities i have some wonderful quizzes you can take on my website brandyjoy.com um, i also have a membership community where i teach all of this stuff step by step and um, also, of course, I have guides you can download. So anyways, it was really fun chatting with all of you about astral versus etheric and out-of-body experiences, which can be etheric or astral. Um, but I hope that was helpful because a lot of people think they're having an astral out-of-body experience when in fact they're having etheric. And etheric can be um, a little bit dangerous in a way if you are energetically leaving your body and um, not protected. Um, that means other energies can kind of mess with you and stuff. So just be careful with that. Um, make sure you're protected. Make sure you know what you're doing. You have some type of guide or a community around you that is experienced. All right, everybody. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.